Hello class, welcome to lecture 10. And in this lecture, we're going to be shifting gears a little bit. So in the previous lecture, we talked about some kinematic flow patterns. Here we're gonna be talking about something that's pretty different. We're gonna be introducing something called the natural, co <laughs> excuse me, we're gonna be introducing something called the natural coordinate system. And, as well, and we're also gonna take a look at some of the concepts, some of the previous concepts and how they actually apply themselves to this natural coordinate system. But in this first segment, I just want to go ahead and introduce the idea of a natural coordinate system and uh, talk about some of the key advantages that this coordinate system offers, as well as some disadvantages. So first, I'll go ahead and start things off by sort of getting a basis of comparison. So in our standard Cartesian coordinate space, we have a nice fixed x-axis that runs in the horizontal direction or in the east or in the zonal direction, I should say, and a nice y-axis that runs in the meridional direction, which is a nice north and south direction. And if we have a wind vector and we want to resolve the individual components, that is the zonal component u and the meridional component v, then we have to do some trigonometry based on the angle of our wind vector. So we have to resolve it into the x and y components. So the zonal component u is equal to the magnitude of the wind times the cosine of the angle. And then the y component, the meridional component, is equal to the magnitude of the wind times the sine of the angle. So if we're working in standard Cartesian space, then we have to break the wind component down into its x and y components. However, in the wind natural coordinates, what we do is we allow the coordinate system to change. And what we specifically do is we align the coordinate system with the wind field. And we don't think in terms of x and y axis anymore. The way that the, uh, the nomenclature that we use involves the t-axis, which is uh, short for tangential, which uh, the t-axis is basically pointing in the same direction as the wind. And then the other axis, which we call the normal axis, points 90 degrees to the left of the t-axis. And by convention, the positive in direction points 90 degrees to the left of the wind vector. So if the wind vector is pointing in this direction, that means that the tangential axis is pointing in that same direction. And the normal axis is pointing 90 degrees to the left of the wind vector. and one of the reasons we like this is because it allows us to really simplify down the individual components of our wind. So now with this coordinate system, the only thing we have to worry about is, uh, as far as breaking stuff down, we only have to worry about the, in the, in the t-hat direction, we only have one component, and that's just uh, the magnitude of the wind, which we define to be this capital V is equal to just the magnitude of the wind. And since the n-axis points 90 degrees to the left of our wind, then the component of the wind that goes in the n direction is just zero. So before, we had the x and y component and the trigonometry. With this system, it's much, much simpler. At least on the surface, it's much simpler. There are some complications that arise from this, and we'll actually uh, discuss that in, the, in this first segment, discuss some of those complications in this first segment. So again, one of the advantages this coordinate system offers, it, allows it, it eliminates the need to break the wind vector down into x and y components. And uh, the disadvantage is uh, if our wind vector is changing direction, let's say it's a curved flow pattern, then that means the coordinate system is also going to be changing, which uh, can make things a little bit complicated. And we'll see how to address those complications. But it actually uh, kind of turns out to be sort of intuitive uh, what, actually, uh, what actually ends up happening when we do that. But just to sort of illustrate what I mean by that, let's take a look at a flow pattern that looks like this. So if we consider this point, remember the t-axis points tangential to the wind. So the t-axis would point in this direction, something like this, and then the n-axis points 90 degrees to the left. And as I go along this trajectory, now my t-axis is pointing like this. So you see as this, uh, as this air parcel or as this trajectory moves along here, you can see that our t-axis is in fact changing direction as is the n-axis. So that's what we mean by if the wind vector is changing direction, that means the coordinate system is also changing direction. And at this point, the t-axis is going to be pointing in a different direction. So every point along this, uh, this trajectory, the axis that we're working with is going to be changing. And that's one of the complications that arises when we're dealing with natural coordinates. But that's going to do it for this first segment. And the next segment, we will continue the topic of natural coordinates and take a closer look at some of the mathematics behind it. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.